The U.S. Bishops Conference is offering prayers for peace in the Holy Land. Violence between Israel and Hamas continues in the region. More than 100 people, including women and children, have been killed. The U.S. CCB says in part, quote, the killing of one's neighbor only serves to demonize one's adversary. For now, though, the military confrontations between Israeli forces and Hamas continue. Video showing Israeli citizens running for cover as the sound of sirens alert people to incoming rockets. Meantime, thousands of Palestinians have fled their homes as Israel pounded the northern Gaza Strip with tank fire and airstrikes. Joining us now to talk more about this is Claire Lopez, strategic policy and intelligence expert and founder of Lopez Liberty LLC. Claire, welcome back. Great to see you. Uh, it has been a while since we've seen this type of conflict in the Holy Land and certainly the most violent uh, since the Gaza War in 2014. Can you talk more about what sparked this most recent activity and also what's different about it? Well, I think there's been a confluence of events that led up to the current clash, right? So obviously the month of Ramadan, which ran from April until May, is a special period of jihad and fighting and warfare, uh, during which Muslims believe they gain extra blessings from Allah. Um, then at the end of Ramadan, about a week ago, you had Quds Day on Friday, which is always uh, the day when the Iranian regime stirs up hatred against Israel and Jews. Um, Monday, this past week, Monday was uh, Jerusalem Day when Israel celebrates the reunification of Jerusalem after the 1967 war. Uh, and then there's been confusion, or at least maybe we could say uncertainty, uh, at the head of, of three governments. Uh, the United States government with a, a new administration that is not seen as uh, supportive of Israel or the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as President Trump had been, uh, uncertainty in Ramallah because Abu Mazen or Mahmoud Abbas um, first called for re-elections and then had to cancel them when they realized that Hamas would probably win those elections. Uh, and then finally, of course, in Jerusalem itself, um, with uh, uncertainty about putting together a coalition for a new government and how that would be formed uh, for the time being, though, of course, Benjamin Netanyahu remains prime minister. Well, as we know, the Israeli Air Force has conducted a, a number of airstrikes, uh, one of the most recent reportedly on Hamas's underground tunnel network. Uh, what more do we know about that, and how has Hamas been responding? Well, it seems that uh, the Israelis pulled off a brilliant information operation between yesterday and today um, by massing troops, including ground troops and tanks, on the border with Gaza, and then putting out over social media and the media um, uh, the implication, at least, that a ground invasion of Gaza was imminent. Um, they lured uh, senior Hamas military commanders out of their hiding underground in tunnels that are sometimes called the metro because they're so extensive underground in Gaza, lured them out um, in a way that allowed uh, Israel to strike them uh, and also at the mouths of the tunnels in a way that set off secondary explosions inside the tunnels, um, destroying uh, piles of ammunition and, and, and other weapons hidden in there. So um, that that is what's been going on. I think that Israel is trying to avoid a ground invasion, as we saw back in 2014. Um, but by ruses like this one uh, and very precision um, uh, airstrikes on uh, headquarters, intelligence centers, logistics centers, ammo depots, and of course, uh, the the um, the missile and the rocket uh, firing uh, locations, they've so far avoided a land invasion, which would involve you know many many more casualties on both sides. Um, but for now, uh, you know they are they are concentrating on uh, precision airstrikes, which have been devastatingly effective. Many many senior Hamas uh, and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. 
uh, commanders um, have been dispatched over the last days. Claire, we have probably about 30 seconds or so left, but I'm wondering, how do you see this all playing out? And do you think there, there will be a ceasefire anytime soon? I expect, at least from statements made by Benjamin Netanyahu, for example, and other leadership figures in Israel, that uh, the campaign to degrade Hamas significantly will continue for at least a few more days uh, into next week, I would expect. Um, and everyone, of course, is hoping to keep the casualties to a minimum and also, at the same time, to deter Hezbollah. Of course, Hezbollah and Hamas both backed by Iran, uh, but to keep Hezbollah from entering uh, into the conflict right now. Well, Claire, thank you so much for coming on and for your analysis. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Claire Lopez, strategic policy and intelligence expert and founder of Lopez Liberty LLC. Thank you again. Thank you.